Hey, what's happening guys? Number three of our buck converters has come in. And this one actually is not a strictly buck converter either. This is a buck boost converter. And it is based off of this IC here. This is the XL6009. This is a buck boost chip. And you can see we have two inductors. We also have two diodes here and uh, I'm gonna bring this over to the microscope so we can take a closer look alright so we're taking a look at this thing in the microscope here this is our input side you see the in plus and the in minus is down at the bottom um, you see we have a filter cap here good for 50 volts and here we have, oh, you can't see that. There we have this diode. Now that is an SS36 diode. And if you just watched my video about the different types of diodes and recovery times, one of the things I said was we don't use Schottky diodes in switch mode power supplies because of their reverse leakage problem. Well, I had to look it up, but the SS36 is, in fact, a Schottky diode. So, uh, that's a little bit odd. I'm not sure why they would put that in there. Anyway, here is our main chip. This is the XL6009 buck and boost. Then up above it here, you see we have the uh, 470 Henry inductor. We have a nice big capacitor there. That's a nice capacitor for this size. But then we have another Schottky. Down below it's another 470 Henry. Here is another capacitor. This is on our output side. And then we have a little 2R2 inductor and a really small capacitor alongside another one of these big chunky capacitors which is real nice and then of course we have the uh, ubiquitous 10 turn pot and next to the 10 turn pot is another what's that say 271 so that's what 270 ohm uh, resistor there's another tiny little capacitor in there and really that's about it we have in on one side out on the other and uh, let's play with it and see what it does alrighty we got her set up for testing here this is our input side and this is our output side and for our test we're just using a 12 volt um, this is a license plate bulb for a car and I am putting in that's a little strange I'm putting in about three volts I don't know why I decided to just bounce all over the doggone place Do I have a loose cable or something there we go 3.2 volts that's our in so I'll just leave that right there for you and that's our out we're at 3.7 volts now if I turn up our input voltage so watch the blue 01 meter take it up to say 5 volts here we've gone down to 1.22 volts so it was in the boost mode but by adjusting this screw right here, I mean, it is the only screw on here, I can crank the voltage up. 3.2 volts. Let's set the voltage for 5 volts. Or as close as we can for 5 volts. Because the screw is a little bit on the touchy side okay 5.03 
4.9 so we're almost completely even and who knows how accurate these meters really are so <laughs> there you go so from five volt from five volts in we're getting five volts out you can see our light is barely lit so let's put this guy in boost mode and crank air up seven volts eight volts this is a 12 volt bulb so we'll take it up to uh well, hell, let's take it to 10.86. You can see the bulb is now well and truly lit. We're still putting in 4.8. Our, our voltage has dropped a little bit. And our current is uh, 0.88 amps, or 880 milliamps, going into that bulb. If you're wondering where I'm getting the current reading from, well, I'm getting it from right there on the power supply. Pretty simple. All right, let's change things around. Let's put it in buck mode. Okay, let's just leave it right here. We'll just leave it at 10 volts, and we're gonna take our voltage up to say 15 volts. Slowly getting up to 15. Hey, look at that. I almost landed right on it. I couldn't do that if I tried 100 more times. Now, at 15 volts in, we're still at 10.88. Well, it looks like it's gone up maybe 20 millivolts, but it's still the same voltage. But check this out. Our current went from 880 milliamps to 210 milliamps. So it's definitely more efficient in boost mode. And that makes sense because what we're doing in boost mode is we are trading voltage for current whereas i'm sorry in buck mode we're trading voltage for current so we have more voltage and we'll trade that in and we'll be able to get more current however in boost mode it's the opposite we're taking all the current we have and trading it in for voltage but all right let's crank this bad boy up a little bit more let's go up to say 20 volts Twenty volts. We've gone up what? Another ten millivolts. So this guy is holding pretty steady. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to reach over here and fire up the oscilloscope. And as soon as it's booted up, we'll take a look at the switching on the oscilloscope. So bear with me for just a second. All right. So I'm probing the output on the oscilloscope here let's take a look and I will try and zoom in don't want to go too much there do I that bulbs kind of reflecting back there but you can see we've got a switching frequency of 212 kilohertz and if we zoom in a little bit more maybe a little bit more all right now we'll grab our cursors for manual and voltage and we will figure out what our ripple is so it looks like our ripple is 15.4 millivolts and in my book that is quite acceptable very nice and in fact, I mean, if we zoom out here to something reasonable like 200 millivolts uh, per division, that's a pretty flat line. This thing's pretty solid. Let's look at another place on here. We'll probe the output of this diode. Yeah, see, we're not getting any trouble out of that either. Oops, kind of hard to keep my, my probe on there. Now there's the output of the diode, and we're looking at 500 kilohertz on that. Now that is an interesting waveform, so I'm going to pause that and let's talk about it for a second. All right. So what, what we're seeing here is obviously a square wave. But if you look here, 
right at the zero crossing point on each of these square waves, there is an excessive amount of ringing. We're at 10 millivolts peak to peak. Let's grab our cursors and do voltage again and look and see how much that ringing is actually showing us. 14.8 millivolts. Now, we said just a couple seconds ago when we looked at things that our ripple was 15 point something and now we're seeing 14.8 volts on that ring well now something tells me that it's got to be a connection in there somewhere am i right i want to know what you guys think tell me should we look at anywhere else on the uh on the board where else could we look at we did the output we did the uh, output of that diode who said inductor alrighty if I can get her clamped on here we will check out the output of the inductor whoa my we got us a waveform there let's zoom up and have a look Bring this bad boy in. Wow. Now, what's that look like? Well, it looks like my probe fell off. That's what it looks like. So we're seeing the same... Let's zoom back down here to the board. We're seeing the same waveform in the output of the inductor as to the output of the diode. Very interesting very interesting but that's cool now i think this is actually a nice little buck boost converter and, and the great thing about it is is that it does both so regardless of what your input is it's going to keep your output where you set it of course there's going to be a trade-off because there ain't no such thing as a free lunch and that trade-off is going to come in the form of current you're either going to gain current or you're going to lose current, but something's going to happen to your current, right? Well, I don't remember because I'm getting old and forgetful if I apologize for the air conditioning noise, but it's hot here. So yeah, the air conditioning's running. Anyway, this module I got off of eBay. The seller was two by cell seven. It is listed as DC DC Buck Boost Adjustable Step Up Down Converter XL 6009 Module Solar Voltage T. That's a hell of a lot. Let's just call it a Buck Boost Converter. But what's not a hell of a lot is the price. This was a buck twenty-eight. From the People's Republic of China to my door here in the Greater. Pittsburgh area. Go Steelers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. And hey you, yeah you watching this video. Did you know we're giving away an ANANG 8009 multimeter just like this one except that of course it'll be brand new in a package with all the goodies sponsored by our good friends at Banggood there will be a link down below to the video where I'm announcing this if you want to enter this contest and you can enter it from anywhere in the world that Banggood delivers so if they can bring it to you on camelback or a jet ski or dog sled enter the contest you never know you might win. I'm not selling your information to anybody. I'm doing this as a way to thank you folks. And uh, Banggood likes uh, the publicity, so they're agreeing to sponsor it. That's it. I'm out. Peace.